Skins TV. I'm here at one of our top secret design days at one of our factories in the East Midlands and I've managed to grab ex-England rugby star, recent competitor on Channel 4's The Jump and Pro Skins director Jason Robinson. Hello. Hi. Thank, thank you. you for joining us. You've just taken part in The Jump which we watched religiously here at Pro Skins. Yeah, yeah. You're a novice skier, is that right? Um, before I started The Jump yeah. I hadn't skied before. So uh, I started in, in, in December and yeah, I, I, I must admit I struggled, and I'm not sure initially why I decided to go on it because I never skied before, <laughs> and I'm scared of heights. Wow! So it's probably not the best, <laughs> best <laughs> ingredient for uh, for going on the jump. But you know something, it was it was absolutely fantastic. There were, you know, we had a real good group of people yeah. there, but also it was really challenging. Yeah, um, some of the some of the challenges that you did looked really difficult, and I I've, I've never skied before, and. I'm not sure I'd do it for the first time on TV, so I think now, I'm in awe. And the thing is as well, being sort of an ex-rugby professional, everybody expects you to be quite tough. Yeah. Uh, but there, <laughs> there, are a few, uh, there are a few of the disciplines there, the skeleton. Yeah. Absolutely hated the skeleton. Going head first on... That would be one of my worst nightmares, I think. Yeah, going head first on a metal sledge, 60 miles an hour. Um, yeah, not my <laughs> idea of fun. No, and, uh, and the jump itself, when, when, you, when you see it on TV, yeah. it doesn't look that bad. How high is it actually but is. When, but when we go there, we have to get a lift up to the top of the jump. So you imagine looking down mm. then, all you can see is, is a ramp, but you can't see where you're landing. Oh my god! And gosh. because I'm scared of heights as well, you're almost jumping into mid -air. But you did so well! Like, you wouldn't have known you were that scared. You did really yeah. well. Well, <laughs> there's a man, there's a bit of pride there. So I'm trying, trying to make it look like I'm not uh, petrified. But, but it was a, one of the best experiences um, I had. met some, some great, great people. We loved watching the relationships you formed with fellow contestants. What was it like to meet Gareth not on the rugby pitch? You, you know something, it was, it, it was really nice because over the years we've gone head to head, yeah. uh, England against Wales, and, and you tend to uh, still be in match mode, and then when you finish, you don't really get much time no. to talk. So I know Gareth, I've been on tour with Gareth, we've played together, um, but it gave me an opportunity to get to know him a lot yeah. more, because we're in each other's pockets for, for two months, basically. And, you know, he's such a nice guy. It's so funny as well, and you know it was it was just nice to see, you know the other yes, side of it. But even you know he's he's a big big lad, and you know he was petrified um, when it came to the skeleton. But, yeah. but we're out of our comfort zone because yeah. we, we've not skied before, and I think that was part of the challenge. You know, doing something that you've you've never done before, yeah. and you know trying to overcome it. And um, watching Spencer win, now that was a massive shot because Lewis did so well week after week. It, he was literally unstoppable. Did anyone see that coming? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a massive shock because we obviously were training yeah. every day together, so you you get an idea of who's jumping and who's progressing in, in certain areas. So I I knew that Spencer had it in him, and he you know he desperately wanted to <laughs> win as well. Um, I mean it, it it worked out sort of really well because everybody was expecting to Lewis to win because he had more cowbells than the probably cows in Austria, but um, Spencer pulled it out of the bag right at the end with a final jump and uh, you know it was good, it was good, good to be part of. Yeah, amazing. Um, so we can't have you here without talking about rugby. Uh, Six Nations Sorry. finished last weekend. Mm -hmm. England have equaled New Zealand's record with 18 um, consecutive games that they've won mm -hmm. in a row. So close to the Grand Slam, so close. But just that one game away from beating the record as well. Um, what do you think about the boys and how, how they played in this tournament? Yeah, I mean, the, the, to get to that stage they, they've done fantastic yeah. well. You know, the, the last World Cup was so disappointing. Um, then they obviously made a lot of changes. Eddie Jones came in and he's been a, a breath of fresh air. And since then, they've just got stronger. The, you know, the, you can see um, the fitter, the, the look more comfortable on the ball. And, and they've been winning. And, you know, they, they won the grandson last year. They obviously got themselves to a stage now where they've won eight, 18 consecutive yeah. games. And then it was all down to uh, out in Dublin, the final game. And unfortunately, they, they, they came up short. And I mean, they will be bitterly disappointed because, you know, this opportunity is probably not 
come ever again to to go on such a run. Yeah. You know, I've I've never done it with any of the teams that I've been. And um, so you're well known for being dual coders. You've obviously played uh, rugby league and rugby union. Um, and Rugby Sevens has just been introduced into the Olympics, it was in Rio last year and it's the first time actually in the Olympics men and women have both been able to play rugby, so, which is really great. Um, we were chatting about Rugby Sevens in the office and we think with your pace that you'd have actually been pretty great at Rugby Sevens. Uh, you know something, I, I played Rugby Sevens um, at, at club level but never international level and you know I go and watch some of the games, I'm about to go off to Asia and, and, and watch Hong Kong and Singapore and the way it's progressed over the years has, has been amazing. Uh, the players are just fitter, faster, stronger. And I, and I watch it and think, I'm so glad I'm not <laughs> now because, you know, they are, you know, some of the fittest um, athletes yeah. in world sport, never mind in, in, in rugby. Um, but the game's exciting. Sevens is just exciting. And, you know, its inclusion into the, uh, to the Olympics, I think, was, was massive. Um, to, to have that and to showcase it on a world stage, I think I think was great. And you know, for Fiji to win their first ever Olympic medal um, was, was amazing. The, yeah. the players themselves, I mean, they're they're heroes back home. And and I think anybody, the neutrals that watched the the, the sevens in the Olympics, were certainly taken in by it because it is it's fast, it's exciting. And uh, you know, there's some real, real talent. So it was a great addition to the Olympics, and uh, you know, um, just looking forward to uh, to the next one. Now. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, cause rugby hasn't actually been played in the Olympics since 1924 or something like that. A long so time. So a long time. So it's nice to sort of include it again and get it get it back in the Olympics, where you know where it should be. I think. Yeah, and and also you you know you said before the the, the ladies sevens, you know, it's just going from from strength to strength. You know, I, I wouldn't want to be on. There <laughs> um, as well as among all the other amazing you know, achievements and accomplishments that you, you have done in your lifetime so far, um, you also have an OBE and I just have to mention this because I love the Queen, I love the Royal Family. What was it like meeting the Queen? Uh, well I mean sport because I have an MBE as well. Yes you do. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean that's why sport's great for me because it, it, it took me from quite a humble upbringing and then you know I had a had a gift in, in sport and it just made me um, achieve so many different things so so many experiences that I never thought yeah. would happen so to to get the letter through the post to say you, you've got an MBE so I got my MBE when I won the World Cup in 2003 yeah. Um, and yeah when you go to Buckingham Palace it's 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 not every day you go down there, but it, it got into a bit of a habit at one time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're, we're being invited to have tea with the Queen and stuff like that. So it was it was a great experience. I'm you know, really nervous. Um, but, yeah, I've had a proud moment. And then I, you know, obviously met the Queen and, and then I got my OB um, awarded by uh, Prince Charles. Oh, so, wow. Uh, is the Queen as cute in real life as she looks on TV? Um, she's, she's I'm, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure cute would be the... Uh, <laughs> she's pretty cute. You know something, one of the, you think you're sort of prepared for it and then and when you get to see the Queen you're so nervous, you know, you, you're kind of waiting in line and um, it, it really is a nerve wracking experience. So as well as everything else that you do, um, you're also a ProSkins director, which is incredible. Um, so how did you get, how did you get involved with, with ProSkins? So it probably goes back about six and a half, seven years ago, um, I was actually playing some semi-professional at the time. I just went out to help a, a team in the in the north and I can remember meeting one of, uh, I actually met a couple of the directors at one of the games and they said look you know will you just try this stuff and I, I've over the years I've had all sorts yeah. of products thrown at me and I've probably got a, a drawer full of stuff and uh, I thought just out of courtesy I'll, I'll say yeah I'll, I'll try it. And then uh, Neil French, um, one of the founders, um, said, look, we'd like to take, take your measurements. So I said, well, I'm a, I'm a 32 waist. And he said, no, we'd, we'd like to uh, get you some bespoke made. And, and then that was when my ears started to prick up because I'm not a normal shape and sportsmen and women tend not to no. be. Probably most people are. You know, I've got a, a small waist, I've got big thighs and I've got skinny ankles. So 
he sat me down and took about 18 measurements of, of my legs. And then it started to make sense, you know, I started then to look into it, because it's amazing you know, how ignorant you can be. You can put on, you know, compression leggings and still not have a clue. You yeah, know, there's, what there's, it's actually doing for you, yeah, why you're wearing it. You know, there's, there's different fabrics, there's different stretches, yeah. and uh, ultimately there's, there's different outcomes. And so because of that, then I, I, I thought, yeah, I, I get this, I, I, I like it. And, and as a result, I started off then and I was, uh, I was an ambassador for Pro Skins. You know, it's all about getting the right compression levels, um, making sure that, you know, you get the best recovery you can. Because in sport, it's all about, you know, how, fa how fast yeah. and everything else. But ultimately now it's about how quick you can recover after the game and so yeah. many times you know people um, myself included over the years have worked my socks off been massively fatigued and you know you get that lactic build up in, in the legs and your legs are tired and then that will affect you you know the following day yeah. and the day after um, so everything you can do to speed up um, that process yeah um, you know pre post exercise mm -hmm. You know, will make a massive difference, and also to injuries. If you, if you're, if if your legs are tired, your mind can be tired, yeah. and then as a result, you can pick up injuries. So, you know, once I spent time with with Neil, who not some fabrics and compression levels and everything else, it just made sense to me, and you know, I ended up becoming um, a director then. And uh, yeah, I've enjoyed the uh, the journey ever since. Yeah, I, th I think the great thing about pro skins is that you can wear them anytime. Yeah. Um, you know, quite often we think it's just when you you're working out um, post workout, which obviously helps and, and makes a massive difference. Um, and I'm finding as well, the older I get, the more help I need. To be honest <laughs> with you, so. um, but I also sleep in them. Yeah. Um, not every night, but uh, you know. Quite often, if you if you have had a um, a tough leg session, or you know, for me, I might have been on the treadmill, which is uh, twenty minutes. That's a tough leg session for me now. Um, but sometimes it's you know, if I if you can wear them in bed, then you can get seven hours of, of compression yeah. while you're asleep. So double up as pajamas as well. So you can actually um, have the benefit of that. And also, you know, I, I do a lot of driving, and I'm sat down quite a lot. So. I tend to find that if I put them on, it just helps because yeah. sometimes I get to, uh, you know, get out of the car after being, you know, been there for three hours, and you know my my legs are in bits. So I mean, it's it's more of an everyday thing as opposed to uh, just, just to pulling out, out yeah, now and again. And so now that you know rugby, you don't play professional rugby anymore, and sort of working out isn't you know your main job as such. You have such a busy lifestyle, and you're here, there, and everywhere. Do you still work out? I know that you and Sean work out sometimes. Um, what is your workout regime? How do you fit it in? Yeah, I mean, I, it, it, it's a lot more difficult now um, that I'm having to work. <laughs> um, you know, when you, as a player, you, you probably take it for granted. Yeah, that's training, what you're, you're told you're to training, do. Training, you know, twice a day. Yeah, I think sometimes training you can, training can be really simple. And, and even though I've, I've trained for a long, long time, she has the real in-depth knowledge of, of training, the functionality yeah. of everything and muscles and... So that's great, um, that's great to have that knowledge like working alongside you. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is and uh, I mean she's she's in the, she trains every day. Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually quite envious. <laughs> um, but it, 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 it's good, I think the mentally it's, it's good. Um, you know when you've got a lot on sometimes just going to the gym, you know it, it just makes a massive difference, it clears your yeah. mind. I feel like it gives you that boost. If you're having yeah. a bad day, the last thing you want to do yeah. is go to the gym. But after you've been to the gym, Definitely, yeah. it makes a massive change. Yeah, and sometimes it, just, sometimes it just takes a bit of effort. And when you do make that effort, it certainly makes makes a difference. So, you know, training, although it's not um, as important as it used to be, it still is important. Yeah. Uh, as, as, I, as I get older now, and uh, it's good to keep things just ticking over. And, uh, so I've just got to ask you, you know, now you've done a reality TV show, now you've done the jump, would you consider, because you know, you've got dancing feet, you've got special feet, would you consider ever doing something, I don't know, like dancing on ice? Or... Rugby players do really well on these programmes. Like, um, really well. You know something, I've been asked so many times to do every other programme on TV, and the only reason why I did the jump is because I didn't really see it as a reality, yeah. reality show. Um, and I knew that if I wasn't good enough, 
then I would get knocked out. Uh, whereas with some of the shows, it's it, it is judging all the public. Yes, it's massively vote. on the public vote. Yeah. And uh, it's it's almost like watching Honey G. I you know I I liked it for a bit and it was quite then, funny. Yeah. But then it gets <laughs> to a stage where. It just becomes a little bit ridiculous because I don't think you'd have been that bad. No, but when people are getting knocked out, that are, that are better, yes, um, just because of a, a you know a a voting system, yeah. that's when I, that that would have uh, I wouldn't have liked that at all. So I, I can handle if I'm not good at something, then that's it. I'm out. Yeah, so I can handle that. But uh, but I've asked, been asked to do all kinds of things. Um, would you ever go in the jungle? Great Britain. I've been asked to to trial for the Great Britain bobsleigh team. Ah. Um, celebrity mastermind, <laughs> um, singing, dancing. Do you, are you everything. a secret singer? Is um, there a voice in there? Everybody, the car? Everybody's a secret singer. <laughs> I, do a lot of I do a lot of driving and uh, I love the likes of Lionel Richie Luther Bandit. Yes. So yes. In the car, I am the best. I'm actually, <laughs> in, in my car, I'm better than Lionel and Luther. Sometimes I have to turn them down so I can. Or turn them up so you can't hear yourself. <laughs> no, no, turn them down so I can't hear myself. <laughs> I just put the window down so everybody else can hear me, but uh, no, we all like to think we can sing, but I think, I think when it comes to singing so in front of people, we'll I, give Celebrity X Factor or something on this, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll leave that one out. Yeah, we'll, we'll give that <laughs> Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to come and chat to us. And just before uh, we leave you, from myself and all of ProSkins, we'd just like to say congratulations because you've just achieved a Lifetime Achievements Award from the British Ethnic Diversity Sports Awards, which is incredible, which must feel amazing. Yeah, it was, I mean, you, you, know, you play the game because, because you love it and, uh, you know, I suppose to be recognised for, for what you've done over the years um, is, is, always, is always great. And to follow in the footsteps of previous winners like uh, Frank Bruno, Denise Lewis, um, I feel I'm in very good company. Yeah, I think that's incredible. And obviously, Kadena Cox was there as well. Yeah, so yeah, Kadena won an award as well. So oh, it's like a reunion. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, so it was, uh, no, it was uh, a, a great night. Brilliant. Thank you so much. This was ProSkins TV, and hopefully, we'll catch Jason again soon in the future. Thank you. And if you fancy seeing any more videos, why not subscribe to our YouTube channel, ProSkins TV? And if you'd like us to cover anything in particular, just comment below. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ProSkins Limited. And as soon as you're there already, why not give us a like on Facebook? From all the ProSkins team, take care and hopefully we'll see you soon.